give this video understanding how to do a bench test on an IGBT module for a YK centrifugal chiller. All right, how you doing? I'm Holden Schamberger. I'm with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. I specialize in chiller systems. Today we're going to be talking about IGBTs. This is going to be the cut down version of this. There will be a more full length version where I go into more detail on a few items in chilleracademy.com under the YK course and the troubleshooting section. If you want to go check that out or if you want to be a part of the academy, you can get the full link there. Ultimately, you're still going to get everything you need to do this and do this properly in the field. So getting into our readings, the very first step we need to take is make sure that our DC bus is fully discharged. It cannot have any kind of power up here on the DC bus. There's two ways to check that. We could either read uh, DC volts across here, okay? And you would just set your meter to DC. You would want to put it at DC 600 in this particular case. Uh, now, if you have an auto range, you don't have to worry about that. It'll do it for you. But take your, check your DC across here and whatever. make sure this reading is down to zero. Uh, the other way to do it is to go across a set of capacitors. So back here behind on the DC bus, there'll be a set of capacitors. Uh, basically, every two screws that are relatively close to each other, that's going to be your, your capacitors. Measure in between those, that's going to give you what your DC bus voltage is. It is imperative that power be off to the chiller entirely, and that DC bus voltage be fully discharged. You will get hurt or something will get damaged if you do not do that. Now, obviously, I've got this IGBT pulled and sitting on the, the table here. We're going to test it in this fashion, and you can do it this way, but in the field, you don't have to remove it. So this testing can be done with it fully in place, whether you have the higher horsepower or the lower horsepower. This particular one came out of the lower horsepower, which is the 292 horse or the 351 horse. Uh, the larger ones have a slightly different design with a, a different uh, gate driver board, the green board on top. Those are 419 or the 503 horse is the next version above this. This is all for low voltage, 480 volts specifically. Now this test and this process, whether you're low voltage, medium voltage, you should be using the same style. They'll be just maybe a different size. They may look a little bit different. But the test procedure and the numbers, the actual readings we're looking for, will be the same and applicable across the board. The most I will do in terms of removing anything is I might remove the motor leads at times just as a precaution because I've dealt with electronics a lot. I know how you can get some kind of back feed sometimes. So my focus is let's remove those motor leads. But for the actual testing, the bus bars need to stay in place. Everything else should remain. So our meter, make sure that we're in our diode test mode and make sure your meter is capable of reading in diode. And we're going to be looking for two different readings. We want to see either the VDC reading of the factory officially says 0.3 to 0.4 VDC. Or we want to see a flat OL. Now, I have a slightly modified version of that. So with my background electronics and dealing with diodes and things, we have a much more refined number of 0.34 to 0.38. Okay, that is the typical number we're going to be shooting for with uh, something like this. But the factory does give a much broader official determination as long as you are in between 0.3 and 0.4 you're considered okay or within normal standards as far as they're concerned if you're using an analog meter to do this in a more traditional test you would instead be using ohms in a uh, one ohm scale and you'd look for 5 to 10 ohms instead of 0.3 to 0.4 vdc today i'm going to be showing you the digital version of this as most of everybody that I'm aware of uses that in today's standards. The first test I'm going to show you is going to be for the smaller version of drives. That is the 292 and the 351 horsepower. 
then I will remove this and draw out the larger version and just show how the test is going to be slightly modified. So we have our input and output side. One way to know is the orientation of the plug. The output side, the plug is going to be the closest to in the, uh, the technically the right hand corner. So if you're uncertain and you'd like to verify, if you put your black lead on the on one side and leave it there and then move the other side, you're going to see the reading fluctuate. Now, if we leave our red lead where it's at and then move our black lead, we're going to see that it doesn't change. We get the same reading either side. That is one way to verify that this is your output. This is your input. These two will give you different readings. These two will not. That is where this on the smaller versions will have a single bus that will cover these two terminals. This is your motor, these two terminals, and these two terminals. Where your DC bus is connecting to these as two separate terminals. But there will be a snubber capacitor across here. So for the official test, I'm just going to pick one of the outputs. Then I'm going to go to my positive lead. That gives us an OL. That is a good reading. That's what we want to see. Now, if I come over here to the negative lead, so I want to give this a second. Don't just take the initial reading, but once it shows fully stable, 0.35 is our reading. That is a good test. Depending on your preference, you could either move over here and test the next one, or I like to finish a full gate at a time. To do that, we now need to reverse our leads. And our red lead will then go on the output side. We'll use our black lead. And we're going to notice the other, earlier this was OL. Now we have a reading of 0.35. On the positive, in our negative terminal, gives us OL. That's a good test. That is exactly what I want to see for this gate. And we're going to do that same exact process on all three of these. So we would start off. On output side, positive terminal, OL, 3.5, then we would reverse leads, 0.35, and OL. I apologize, I think I said 3.5. That's not what I meant. I meant 0.35 just a second ago. And then you continue this over to number three. That is the test. Those are the numbers we're looking for. We fell within our range on this particular one. From a silicon perspective, it shows to be good via our diode test. Again, if you were using an analog meter, when you did this, you would show OL or infinity. When you came over here, instead of the VDC, you would see a 5 ohm to 10 ohm value. So for this next part, I'm going to draw it out. So you have a clearer picture of what it is we're talking about. So with the larger horsepower, we would have three modules in total. Each of these modules will control a single leg of power. This would be your L1, your L2, your L3. You would still have your input side with your various terminals. Then you would have your output side and your terminal arrangement would remain the same. Now our motor side would have one big bus bar that would come across the whole motor side and you'd see the little uh, nuts sticking up for the the bolts to hold the bus bar down to the IGBT and each leg would have its own little bus bar. To do this test we're going to come to this very last terminal over here and we're going to put our positive lead here uh, or the red lead on the positive terminal. Now with our leads in this configuration we would see a OL reading. Then if we move our red lead to the negative, but keep our black lead where it is on the output, then we would see our VDC reading. Remember, it would be 0.3 to 0.4 per the factory. Now, our next test, we're going to go back to the positive lead, and we're going to come over here to the L2 leg of the motor. We'd put it on the very last terminal for the motor. It really doesn't matter which of these you choose, but the specific factory procedure calls for this terminal. So you'd put it on there, and that's where you'd get OL. Then you would get your VDC. And the same thing over here on L1. 
this terminal, OL, VDC. Then we would switch the leads. We'd get just the opposite. This would give us VDC. This would give us OL. VDC, OL. VDC, OL. Just because all of these readings may show OK and normal does not mean that there is not an issue. So with this IGBT as an example, it had an issue with something where the gates weren't controlling properly. The gates test okay, but we were still having a output frequency issue that was causing a disturbance in our motor. Even though this test ran okay, we did still have to replace this IGBT to correct the problem. I can do further training lessons on how to get to that point in the troubleshoot and do a troubleshoot around leading up to needing to do this kind of testing. If you'd like to see some of that, please let me know and I will make plans to go deeper into the other tests that get done around this that aren't necessarily the IGBT itself. And if you found this training useful, you'd like to see the full cut version of this, go to chilleracademy.com got the YK course in there, cover troubleshooting and operations, the full version of this where I go into a few extra details, I get a little deeper on some of the explanations, that will exist there. But from a basic field perspective, this is the information you need to properly and effectively do this test and do it safely. With that, MTT, make this time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. I appreciate you.